Welcome, one and all, to episode 70 Whoa. Of, of the Partial Historians. <laughs> I am one of your hosts, Dr. Greenfield. And I am the Redness. Oh yeah. Yeah. We are back. Indeed we are. And I'm speaking even louder than normal because this is the construction noise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've picked a great day to record. It turns yeah. out that I live on a construction site now. Yeah. Um, That's so, cool. You know, if you hear uh, Rome being built in a day, indeed, in our episode, yeah. don't be surprised. I feel like it's okay to have construction in the background because the Romans are pretty good engineers. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you know, we're working towards building the city. We are indeed from yes. the very foundation itself. Yes. So, regular listeners, you will recall we've been talking about. Well, we've been focusing uh, around Coriolanus as our sort of concentration. Man, I cannot there. tell you how glad I am that that guy is dead. <laughs> Aww. That's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> it took us like 15 episodes. To yeah, yeah. That. So we've, we've been following the journey of Rome from the founding city, but we've sort of been focusing on the personality of Coriolanus. Today, we get to move on, leave him behind, because he's finally dead. We are back in the historical narrative, yep. and it is around about 488 BC. I'll go with that. I'll go with that. <laughs> so, Dr. G, tell me what Dionysius has been uh, spending way too much time <laughs> writing about. Yeah, it'll be no surprise for you, yep. uh, dear listeners, that Dionysius of Halicarnassus is being loquacious as usual. <laughs> uh, he's hey, got it's a- good to know that in this uncertain world, you can rely on Dionysius to be way too verbose and maybe to be way too brief. <laughs> uh, such, such words. Yes. Um, so we're in about four... 88. Yes. The consuls for this year mm-hmm, mm-hmm. are Spurius, Nautilus, Rutilius, Ooh. and Sextus, Furius, Medunilius, <laughs> Tuscus. I always love it. Or I'm something furious. of that nature. There are so many names to that second guy. You go Furious. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call him Furious. Yeah. Um, and he is going to go fast. Just you wait. Mm. Um, because uh, Dionysius of Halicarnassus actually has a very short um, brief sweet moment oh. where he covers a whole year of Roman history in what is literally a single paragraph. See, that's interesting because you know I was going to say when I'm looking at where I'm up to, like with Coriolanus finally being out of the picture, it doesn't quite match up with where you're up to in terms of uh, <laughs> consuls. Yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And and where it's not at all clear yes. um, how to sync up these different narratives. Yeah, I the think years are out yeah. of joint. I think it's because, well, obviously different writers, different interpretations, but also I think because I sort of finished up looking at, you know, when the women who helped apparently persuade Coriolanus to go away, little boy, <laughs> play with your toys elsewhere, um, they've got a temple, which probably was erected, like, not at the same year that Coriolanus Piers, yeah, so, quite yeah. possibly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I have some mention of the temple, but that's what I'm going to assume. Anyway. Yeah. Yes, but yeah, no, I, in terms of actual years, I do actually kind of sync up with you in terms of consuls. But yeah, it's just like yeah, what's the number? The yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And anyway. what is actually happening? Yes, um, yes. <laughs> and we're we're in a very hazy territory here. We are, yeah. Um, let's just say that you know this consulship, this pair, mm. uh, they don't get a lot of credit for anything. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> they they do have some trouble. They acquit themselves pretty poorly. Okay. In battle against the Volskians and the Aquians. Ah. And just to give you a sense of like where we might be with this kind of thing, I've realized that I want to give you like a spatial understanding of where we are. Yes, we've never been very good at that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's tough. Yeah. Um, so Rome is kind of on this western edge mm. of the middle of Italy. Yes. It's very exciting. The boot. <laughs> yeah. And you ask yourself, where are these Volskian characters? Mm. Well, it turns out that they're sort of uh, south, but also sort of east, because mm. Italy actually shifts around exactly, um, yes. to the east and curves around a bit. Yeah. Um, so they're they're a bit south. It's like the the lower thigh, <laughs> <laughs> mm, heading down towards that heel. Yeah, and, on the zipper. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> um, whereas the Aquians, yes. these other characters, mm. are actually a little bit to the north yes. of Rome, or at least. East and maybe north north or north east east or north north east Ooh. or one of those things. Get your geography skills ready. <laughs> yeah, look, you know, I mean, no, obviously. Um, <laughs> but let's say that they're east, but also a little bit north. Yes, but not very far. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the Volskians are the people that, um, in case listeners might have forgotten, that Coriolanus went and hung out with for a bit and <laughs> looked rather threatening <laughs> for a while, but. 
Yeah. Au contraire of all, all sorts of things, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, so we get yeah. out of this period of Coriolanus hanging out with the Volskians yes. and causing all sorts of trouble. Yeah. And it turns out that the consuls that follow are like, you know what, we need to deal with the Volskians. Sure. Surprise. Understandably. Yeah. Um, but they kind of botch it up. Mm. Um, <laughs> so, so things not going so well for the Romans, even with Coriolan, it's not. Good I part mean, of it. no, not really. Mm. Um, the Volscians and the Aquians are kind of uh, doing their own thing, um, and but it turns out, y- yeah. not kind of, but not really okay. as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, there's confusion and disorder amongst the Roman uh, ranks. Right. Um, people get killed on both sides. Um, oh, that's good. <laughs> there, seems, yeah, there seems to be a general sort of chaos, though. Um, and when Rome has the advantage, in yes. both cases, they don't press it home. Ah. Yeah. Crucial follow through, guys. Yeah. There's nothing like <laughs> letting down the Romans through. at home yeah. by not following through. <laughs> Always follow through. Yeah. In all areas of your life. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to commit to something, you've really exactly. just got to do it. Yeah. Um, so both the consuls get back to Rome. Um, they find themselves in disgrace. Mm. Um, and Dionysus says they bear the stigma for cowardice. Oh. Mm. Wow. That's, that, that's rather sad, really. Yeah. <laughs> and then they just don't go on any more expeditions that year. And they're like, you know what? Let's just stay home <laughs> and look after home Can't politics. Possibly dis- disappoint people by hanging around the city. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, you know what? I got things to do at home. Right. Well, that's not good because, yeah, I was thinking that the Romans were going to be all victorious and stuff once they got... Coriolanus out of the way. No, as it turns out, they're sort of flailing. Mm, um, no good, no good yeah. at all. Done. So, so is that pretty much the end of that year for that, you? That is the end of that year. Wow, I think it's the briefest. <laughs> I think I should give you an award for, <laughs> for brevity. Yeah, exactly. The award yeah. goes to Dionysus of Halicarnassus, <laughs> Roman Antiquities, Book Eight, Section Sixty Three. <laughs> yeah. <No>. All right. <laughs> So the following year, are you up to the year where there's a Titus Sicinius and Caius Aquilus? Aquilus? Yes, ah. I am. I am. So meet me, Dr. G. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. What's going down? <laughs> Not much, actually. But I'm just, I'm just oh, excited man. that we're on the same page. Yeah. This is pretty much. I think this is where we're talking still very much in Livy about, as you've been talking about. Conflict with the Volskians and the Aquins, and they they do seem to be kind of loosely allied, but probably. In the sense of my... Wait, let me get this right. My... No, can't do it. <laughs> my enemy's enemy is, is my, my friend. friend. Yeah, I always feel like I'm just saying that wrong. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, it seems to be in that sort of a sense. And I think also there is a bit of fallout from Coriolanus going on here, in my account. Mm, interesting. Yeah, yeah. I think that perhaps the alliance is somewhat tested. That Atus, uh, Atius Tullus... Coriolanus, once a time uh, bromance partner, <laughs> is uh, is losing, you know, he's losing the faith of the Aquians and that sort of thing as military Oh operations no! Yeah, I don't know if there's any mention of that. Yeah, anymore, I mean, he he comes up, but let's say uh, I've got another four pages Fair to enough. go before please, I get to him. Please fill us in, <laughs> fill in the gaps. <laughs> okay, yeah. so it is now 487 mm-hmm. BCE. The consuls Gaius Aquilus and Titus. Sicius yep. or Sicinius. Yep, yep, um, yep. He's uh, expressed in both ways, depending on your source material. Uh, and I this love a man that goes both ways. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> got to be flexible. Yeah. Um, both of these men are considered to be experienced in war. Okay. So this seems to be like a reactionary uh, right. consulship. And you're yeah, like, bad. <laughs> <laughs> last year was terrible, guys. We've got to get some military dudes in here. <laughs> and they're like, okay. Um, and Rome, being Rome having this sort of what appears to be a natural arrogance sure. as far as I can tell yeah, yeah. Um, from all the history that we've looked at so far I think that's far, fair to say <laughs> <laughs> they decide to go and send an embassy to the Hunusians ah uh, yes they are in my account as well yes mm. yes yes please continue and mm. and they demand from them um, as friends and allies of Rome yes um, customary satisfaction <laughs> Well, I yeah. never. Rome. <laughs> but, yeah. You didn't even buy me a drink. <laughs> you guys just rock up. Yeah. <laughs> I want my customary satisfaction. <laughs> um, so the Hunusians are located uh, conveniently in the between part of Italy, between the Volscians and the Aquians. Well, it makes sense. Um, they turn to them then. And they've probably had a chat with everybody around them and you're like, really? Yeah. <laughs> Rome, are you sure? So let me guess. Customary satisfaction involves giving men to fight when Rome says so? So, yeah. So part of the issue is that Rome goes up to the Hunusians and they're like, dude, we've been having trouble with these Volscians for ages. Yeah. And 
we've suffered at the hands of the Volsky and the Aquins while they've been like going about pillaging our land, yep. engaging in brigandage mm. um, in Roman territory. And we've heard that you guys have been getting in on that as well. Oh, I yeah. see. Well. And, <laughs> and we're supposed to be friends. Um, yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Fair call room. <laughs> and they're like, so what are you doing? Because like now now you need to, like reparations, guys. Yeah. Essentially. <laughs> Demands. <of passion. laughs> they're like, what are you doing? We were, we're friends. And the Hunusians are sort of like, dude, we were friends when Tarquinius was the king of Rome. <laughs> That is when we were friends. And it's like, you expelled that guy from your city oh. and the deal is off. Wow. <laughs> Bold words, Venetians. Bold and like, words. Don't know how you missed that one, buddies. But I don't know how they missed that either. <laughs> that was ages ago. We're like, we have not been friends for a while. Yeah. Um, and they're like, and also, like, seriously, it's not the Hunusians' policy to be attacking you. So anybody who's a Hunusian who you've caught doing this pillaging and stuff, mm. man, they're just doing it off their own inspiration. Mm. Like, don't don't blame us, you know. Blame this was, this blame was, the individual. Yeah, yeah, this wasn't our policy. We never were like, you know what, let's do it. Um, so I feel like that, that actually does make sense because Rome does seem to be somewhat <laughs> of a fair weather friend. <laughs> you know, they only look at their allies when they need them. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and and they're at this point where like we really need to restock. Yeah. Um, we need to build up our forces again, yes. enroll as many people as we can, yes. summon all of the allies and yes. get ready all of our corn, arms and money. Yep. <laughs> and, and, and so approaching the Tunusians was supposed to be part of that policy. Right, yeah. They're yeah, like, yeah. you're our friends. Yeah. We need some men. We need friends. Yeah. We need some arms. Yep. You, know, you could. You know, your corn looks very delicious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> May we fight it? Yeah. <laughs> and the Hunusians are kind of like, look, I don't know what you think is going on here, but if mm. you want to fight us, bring it on. Well, that's unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> so the Romans are like, challenge accepted. Of course they are. Happy to fight a war on three fronts. <laughs> no problems whatsoever. That's never going to be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Why not? Yeah. Um, so they enroll as many of their young as they can. Mm. Uh, and those newly enrolled guys go under Aquilus as okay. consul. Right. And he's going to send those straight after Hunusians. Right. Like okay. fresh blood. Yeah. Yes. Coming at you. Um, <laughs> Sicinius, on the other hand, yes. is going to be leading a force against the Volscians. Yes, this is the same in my account as well. Yes. And then they get together and they rustle up Spurius Lassius, the old consul of 506 say, and 490. Lassius, welcome back yeah. to the fold. He jumps back into the narrative. <laughs> um, he is now actually the prefectus urbi, oh. the prefect of the city. Nice, nice. And he's been charged with the defense of, of Rome and the country surrounding the city. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So he's like, look, I'll sit, I'll be the, the defense system. You guys go out and deal with Hunusians and the Volscians and whoever comes at us, cause we're expecting the Aquians, you know, that does make sense. If you're sending both of your consuls, so your senior magistrates out into the field, you do want to have someone watching the fort at home. Yeah. yeah, so he goes out, so he's defending the countryside around the city. Yeah, yeah. And then there's also this amazing moment where it's kind of, <laughs> so my note here is citizen militia mobilized. And I was like, wait a minute, all Roman armies are citizen militia. I was going to say, point. Yeah. <laughs> how is that different from the regular army? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so what Dionysius says is that those who are above the military age, but still capable of bearing arms, should be arrayed under their standards to guard the citadels of the city and the walls. So it's dad's army. Yeah. <laughs> Intense. And and they have they have these guys, the old crew, who are like, can't travel, still can carry a stick. <laughs> have stick, won't travel. <laughs> the legs aren't up for it, but if someone comes near me, I will stab them as best I can. Trust me, I will. I love it. Um, and they're commanded by Aulia Sempronius, the consul of 497 and 491. Okay. There's a lot of consuls coming back into yeah, the fold yeah. here. They're built, I, mean, I guess by this point in time, we're finally actually building up a bit of a back catalogue of consuls. <laughs> Whereas for a while there, obviously, that was... We didn't have any. First. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's kind of like, that guy used to be consul. <laughs> And, and there's it. like, and this guy's new. <laughs> um, but this, uh, yeah, this but Republic thing. Than you guy. <laughs> Republic thing's been going for a while now. So yeah. they've got like a pool of ex-consuls to choose from. Cool. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, so yeah. So we've got this situation where it's like, you know, the dad's at home, manning the fort. I love the fact that it wasn't a British army invention. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. The old guys with the sticks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you've got Lassius outside in the countryside around the city. Mm -hmm. um, Sicinius going after the Volscians. 
and Aquila's going after the Venusians. Right. Like, We're going to do it, taking the young men. Yep. Um, so they really don't have any men spare right now. No. I they're, they're all busy, essentially. Yeah. The young have gone, the old are staying at home with their pointy sticks. And this is where, sorry, I'm going to have a bit of a tangent here. <laughs> do <but> it. <laughs> this is where, if we're being a little deconstruction-y, <laughs> reading against the text. Ooh. My, what I'm hearing is the women are looking after things. Women are holding together everything right now. Who else is left? <laughs> <laughs> there ain't nobody left. Exactly, yeah. Is there so I recorded there? Yeah. No. Who is sowing the grain for the next harvest? Precisely. The women. Yeah. Who's cleaning? Who's cooking? The, the women. women. <laughs> yeah. Who's performing all the religious stuff that they can? The women. women. <laughs> Who's excited because all the men are away? The <laughs> women. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you know what's going to be cool? Hang out with my lady friends. That's right. Every night is ladies' night. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, so uh, did Dionysius go into lots of detail about said conflicts that are about to take of place? Course. Of course. He does. Silly of course. Silly question. Silly <laughs> question. Um, does Livy have anything to say? No. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I mean, seriously, what you're talking about is about... A paragraph if i'm being generous wow yeah like okay essentially it's just that you know temples erected to the women who help out with coriolanus the volskians the aquians the kind of ally they're making inroads into roman territory the aquians get a little ticked off with adias tullus who's leading the volskians therefore (laughs) therefore um basically the there's a bit of a dispute between them they separate there's a furious battle between them. That's kind of it. That's kind of it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. fair and enough. Sicinius is sent against the Volskians. Um, yeah, Aquilus goes with the Henetians. Oh, look. Very basic. I can't really... Dionysius has some vivid yeah, I accounts really of battle. Yeah, I can't really All right, all right. I'll try to speed it up. Please do. But also give you the highlights of the detail. Go right ahead, yeah. Okay, so Aquilus. Yeah. He's taking these guys against the Hanutians. Mm. Uh, and he finds their forces waiting for him in the countryside around Preneste. Okay. Okay, so mm-hmm. this is like directly almost just east and just a little smidge south of yeah. Rome. So this is Latin territory, but Very it's much. territory Latin territory that does border on Hanutian territory. Fair so the Hanutians enough, are yeah. just sort of cross the, cross the border and be like, hey... <laughs> We're coming. <laughs> and he's like, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so he sets up a camp, which Dionysius describes as a little more than 200 stades from Rome. And I was like, mm. nice. How long's a stade? Yeah. Oh, man. Now, that is something you should never try to find out, guys. Um, <laughs> let me guess. It varies over time. <laughs> fun fact. Yeah. No one can agree um. on how long a stade is. So this yeah. comes from Stadium. Uh, in ah, the Greek say, and stadium yeah. in the Latin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they reckon Ooh. it's around about uh, between 157 meters and 209 wow, meters. Wow, actually a lot longer than I thought. Yeah. Mm, okay. And yet this doesn't help us at all because no. because we can't agree um, <laughs> and because we're not sure. It's a reasonable distance. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a, a yeah. bit of a way. Yeah. Anyway, he seems a bit concerned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he pitches his camp. The Hunutians come out. It's all very exciting. Mm. Um, there are javelins, arrows, stones from well, slings. Well, well. We yeah. Know, we know how deadly they are. Yeah. Seriously. Horsemen clash with horsemen. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> infantry. Fright infantry. Um, fighting by cohorts. A glorious struggle. This all sounds like it's building out to a Roman victory to me. You sound... Yeah. But first... <gasps> Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but wait. Okay, okay. At length, the Romans' line began to be in distress. Uh-oh. Yeah. By late afternoon, um, Aquilus decides to lead an attack mm. against the right wing okay. of the Hanutian forces. Yeah. Um, and a great slaughter ensues. <laughs> of the... Of the Hanusians. Oh, good. <laughs> um, so the right wing is having some difficulties, but the left is still holding out. Mm. Um, so Aquilus realizes that he's about to get caught in what is essentially some sort of pincer movement, movement. Yeah, if yeah. he's not careful. Yep, yep. Um, so he takes the best of the youth, yep. um, <laughs> calls them, rouses them, calls them by name, you, Gaius. <laughs> There's less than 12 names, so you can do it quite effectively. You, Titus, all of the Titi, come all with me. Publius, come with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see you there. Yeah. Um, 
And what he does is amazing. I really love this sort of moment. I, okay. think, I think it's like a narrative fallacy, but like incredible nonetheless. Yeah, yeah. He seizes from the bearers the stanzas of the sentries that did not seem to be fighting with resolution. Mm. So he grabs the standards okay. and he throws them into the enemy. Oh. <laughs> what drama. <laughs> this is incredible. Now, listeners who are just joining us for the first time, we should probably explain exactly what it is they're throwing at the <laughs> enemy. So basically, each, um, each Roman century has a standard, um, which is... It's like a totem a pole. pole. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and they actually are very attached to these things. They're, that's right, we can tell they're like tall sticks. Six doesn't sound right. What's the word I'm searching for? Poles. Poles, thank you, yeah. <laughs> Tall poles, which have got their details, like what yeah, part, the, yeah, what yeah which century. part of the yeah. the legion they're from, yep. which century they are. Exactly, yeah. Um, so it's supposed to be the signal that they can see from far away. Exactly. So that they know that they're with the right group on the battlefield. Precisely, yeah. So, Super important, but it becomes invested with a whole bunch of sort of like uh, superstitious spiritual. Yeah. and spiritual um, qualities um, the sense in which the standard represents yeah. in a very sort of uh, literal way yes. um, the survival of that force exactly so they take it to heart whenever they lose them yeah <laughs> losing them is devastating because if you lose them and you don't retrieve them then you have to retire that whole century exactly yeah, yeah. they don't exist and anymore that's only happened on a handful of occasions yeah. Think of, yeah. But, yeah. Um, but nevertheless this sort of thing is sort of it's bound up to the morality of the troops. For sure, yeah. Um, so, but I imagine they would kind of be okay with it in this. <laughs> in this this is well. This is incredible. This is like using the idea of what the standards mean. Yeah. Uh, in order to propel the army forward. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> so he grabs Take the. Take a bit of that century. And that century. Be like, be like, who's got your standard? The general does. Who's just thrown it into the enemy? I have. Who's going to retrieve it? You are. Yeah. Because you do not want to lose your standard. <laughs> um, so amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can't believe Lizzie missed out on recording that. Yeah, I got to this moment and I, I think it's a narrative creation because I feel like, you know, yeah. nonetheless, yeah. amazing moment of like sort of like military ingenuity. Sure. Um, Aquilus throwing standards into the enemy <laughs> going, fetch, my friends, fetch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And so through the fear of the punishment of having lost the standard yes. and the morality involved yeah. and all of the sort of the meaningfulness that's contained within the standard, yeah. obviously this is compelling them all to go forward. Yes. And so this is how they end up breaking the other wing, nice. the left wing. Phew. So. Go Romans in your crazy <laughs> macho ways. <laughs> yeah. So it takes them a while. Um, and so the Hunusians retreat back behind into their camp. Yes. Um, and the Roman army is very excited at that point because they've been wound up so much by Aquilus uh, that they attempt to storm the walls. And he's like, guys, that's crazy. Just pull back. Pull back. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to just Think chill about for us. a Think moment. Us, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not the time. We can do that tomorrow. Um, and then we have this moment where it's, it's night time. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, the Hunusians all seem to have decided amongst themselves, although not with the consent of their own generals, mm. to leave this battlefield and get out of there. Oh. So there's rustling and noises going on in the Hunusians' camp. Okay. And the Romans are just across the way in their yeah. own camp, being like, what is going on over there? <laughs> uh, a lot of movement for night Yeah, time? yeah. And they're like, you can hear all the stuff going on. Yeah, I can't fight you on an, on no sleep. Right. Oh, goodness me. <laughs> um, so the Romans are like, is it reinforcements turning up to the camp? Mm, a, a reasonable... A reasonable yeah. assumption. Yeah. Because uh, they had heard earlier that there were backup forces on the way. Yeah. And so they were like, oh, this is the arrival of reinforcements. This is a problem. And so they get up. They're like, no more sleeping, guys. Yeah. <laughs> they get themselves into a formation, defensive formation um, within the camp. Mm. And they start um, clashing the weapons together, rhythmically uh, doing some war cries. You know, class. get the fear going. Yeah. Um, to sort of be like, you know, we're not scared of you yeah, and your yeah. reinforcements. Classic battle strategy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Hunusians, however, don't have reinforcements. They, <laughs> they're literally deciding whether they should get out of there and are trying to figure out how to do it. Shit ass. <laughs> <laughs> and then hearing the Romans start up with their battle formation cries and yes, stuff, they're yes. like, oh, no, we are totally out of here. Yeah. <laughs> we run are, away, uh, run yeah. away, <laughs> run away. <laughs> and so they, they just get out. They're like, no, nah, we're not staying now. No way. You can't convince us. Um, they wake up in the morning and they're gone. The Romans are like, what? <laughs> 
But we were all psyched up. Yeah. <laughs> and Aquilus is like, well, you know, this is cool. So they just go in and seize the camp, which has been left there. Yeah. Um, there's heaps of beasts of burdens, heaps of provisions, arms. Bute. Yeah, they take captive of all the wounded who couldn't get out. Yeah. And then they're like, you know what? They can't have gone far. So then they ride out in a dispersed fashion and collect everybody that they can find in the countryside. Oh, snap. Who's, <laughs> who's still trying to just get away. <laughs> I kind of figured that when you said they were getting away, I thought you meant like the army like as a whole was... No, like the the Hunusians have had some sort of like, like uh, fracture mm. in their structures because the generals seem to want them to stay, but the armed forces themselves have been like, nah, I'm not staying around for this. The, the individual soldier on the ground is like, I don't want any more of this stuff. That does make sense because it does say in my account that they are subdued. So. <laughs> <laughs> they are quite subdued. Yeah. <laughs> perhaps very unenthusiastic mm. um, about what's going on. Yeah. And then this leads us into um, Sicinius. Who, the Volskians. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. other console has been yes. set against the Volskians. Well, wait, wait, wait. I've got so much information to impart. Let Jump me, okay. in! <clears throat> Everybody ready? Okay. The operations against the Volskians ended without any advantage being gained on either side. <laughs> that is it? Yep. That is <laughs> oh, Livy. Man, you're getting points for concision. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> well... Um, I don't even know where to start. How do I build on that narrative? I know. Well, <laughs> it's pretty hard to tell, but I must admit. Well done, Livy. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, Tullus Addis, the Volskian general. Yes. I mean, he's there. Coriolanus' is bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's interesting from uh, Dionysius' narrative perspective is yes. that the Volskians have Roman tactics now. Mm, which is exactly what the Romans were afraid of when Coriolanus yes. went over to them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Coriolanus taught them what he knew. I'm stroking my evil pointy beard. <laughs> so the Volskians, you can't just write them off. I think yeah. Livia's uh, done them an injustice, really. Because mm. at the moment, they've got some mad skills they want to deploy against them. Let the... me guess. <laughs> They do. They deploy them. And the Romans oh, yeah. are like, what? <laughs> Essentially, yes. <Yeah. laughs> so they end up uh, facing off on some rocky ground, Ooh, uh, yeah. which is not ideal. No. Um, nobody can use their cavalry. Ah, the horse who? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. Okay. Um, so this is, this is a bit of an issue, because now the Volskian know how to use cavalry, um, but they can't. Well, that's probably a good thing for the Romans, I suppose, even though they can't use their cavalry either. But, yeah. Yeah. But the difference between a Volscian cavalry and a Roman cavalry... Makes all the difference. Yes. Uh. Is that a Roman cavalry will go up to uh, Sicinius and be like, we see that we can't help in our usual way. Mm. Deploy us however you think best. Ooh. Well, I feel like the horses should have some say in this. <laughs> We're up for anything. <laughs> the horses, unfortunately, do not have a voice. Mm. Um, and he's like... That's really great of you. Thank you so much for that offer. <laughs> Peace out, homebro. <laughs> yeah. You're like, that is so generous right now. <laughs> like, I am having some trouble here with yeah. this rocky ground. And you come to me and you're like, I can use this some other way. Thank you. And he does. He no, commends you're them. You're part of the solution, man. <laughs> yeah. Not part of the problem. <laughs> this is how battle works. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> And he says, so they're like, look, let us quit our horses and fight on foot. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. On fire. I don't no, 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 no. Okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah, they're like, look, we can get off the horses, and he's that like, sense, that yeah. is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, excellent, dismount. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets them to sort of move around behind certain areas. Yes. Um, as a supportive force. Mm. So whenever a, a surprise supportive force. Not, not even a surprise, okay. but like you know, fresh troops who can step up if a uh, line seems to be like I becoming see. breached or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, so any moment that there seems to be a weakness, this force steps up and sort of takes the reins. Yeah, yeah. As it were, metaphorically, since yeah. they're not on their horses anymore. <laughs> uh, <that's a> <laughs> See what I did there. Um, the Volskians haven't thought of this tactic, and they don't go down that path. Cool. <laughs> they don't have Coriolanus anymore. <laughs> they can only use what they've already been taught. <laughs> mm. And so, like, what's really interesting about the cavalry mm. is the the sort of detail that Dionysius goes into. Um, they have longer swords than the infantry. Mm, that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they struck all whom they encountered on the arms and slashed them down to the elbows, cutting Yeesh. off the forearms of many together with the clothing that covered them and their weapons of defense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And by inflicting deep wounds on the knees and ankles of many others. What, what, on the knees and ankles? Yeah, hurled them no matter how firmly they had stood half dead upon the ground. Wow. Yeah. 
Mm. Yeah, this is this is, <laughs> this is not pleasant. I'm hoping this is some rhetoric, but maybe not. Yeah, look, mm. I'm guessing this is the sort of thing that you realistically could yeah. expect from having all of a sudden long swordsmen on the ground sure, in addition yeah. to short swordsmen. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the Volskians are forced to retreat. Um, <laughs> what Volskians are left? Yes. And Sicinius does make it into the Volscian camp. Okay. Um, and this is where actually things go down with Tullus Adius as well. Oh, of course, it has to be a showdown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because they get into the camp and mm-hmm. it's tough, but they get in there. And then um, Adius is renowned for being a fighter. Okay. Not so much a general, yep. apparently. Okay. Um, and it's one of those sort of like really... Um, horrifically military poetic scenes where he's just continuing to fight yeah, whoever comes yeah, at him. Yeah. Um, but he's getting man after man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The classic sort of you can almost imagine the scene. <laughs> Pretty much yeah. until at last he is overcome by weariness and many many wounds and he finally falls dead. Yeah, this is there's a scene like this with Spartacus too in one of the accounts about him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the heroic enemy falls. Yeah, mm. yeah. And so he's done his best to try and keep the Volskian thing together. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, in in the combat and the nature of the combat, he's eventually being targeted and just can't hold up to the weight of the enemies that are keep coming at him. Yeah. He's just one man. And a Volskian man at that. Yeah. And now, <laughs> and now a dead Volskian. Yeah. Um, so that's the end. Um, and does this uh, deal a serious blow to Volskian morale slash war effort? Well, look, I mean, you know, the narrative is mostly interested in Rome, so who knows? Oh, okay, <laughs> that's the end. Right, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, you okay. know, in that sense, we move straight on to the narrative of the amazing triumphs that uh, the consuls get to have. Ah, Ooh. very nice. Let me guess, they get to bring out some special clothes? <laughs> yeah, so the people, the Romans... Um, immediately vote um, and have some sacrifices and honour a triumph to each of the consuls. Mm. Um, Sicinius gets the nicer triumph. Well, he I gets think. the That full... makes sense. I mean, he did defeat Atis Claudius. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I was going to say Atis Claudius. <laughs> Whoops, Adius Tullus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he defeats, you know, Adius. He defeats the Volscians, who are considered now this, like, you know, key enemy of yes. Rome, yes. Um, given the situation with Coriolanus. Absolutely. So he gets the fancy triumph. <laughs> and uh, Aquilus gets an, an ovatio. Oh, yeah. Well, see, that's not quite a triumph. Yeah, now, that is, is that is yeah. the lesser triumph. Yeah, no, I'm sorry to signal this to our listeners. Yeah, there are different types of triumph. Mm. An ovatio, I mean, it obviously kind of has something to do with where we get our word ovation from, mm. in that people are pleased with you. But it's nowhere near as fancy or as prestigious as a triumph. <laughs> nowhere near. No. Um, so Sicinius drives into the city mm. um, on a chariot. Yep. With the spoils, with the prisoners, yep. with the army. Yep. Um, his horses on the chariots have golden bridles. Woohoo! He's arrayed in the fancy. royal robes. Ah, uh, yeah. Fancy pants. The fancy robes, yeah. Um, Aquilus, on the other hand, enters the city on foot. Uh, Already it sounds worse. <laughs> bringing up the remainder of the procession. Mm. Ouch. That is definitely <laughs> second prize. Yeah, look, yeah. you know, the Hunusians, who are they anyway? True. Yeah. This is true. Yeah. Wow, okay. Well, that is far more detail than <laughs> these provided. I actually feel like this is probably a good place to pause, actually, because this is essentially the, I was end, going to say, yeah. the end of that year. Yeah, all right. So we might um, wrap things up, but don't despair, listeners. There's plenty <laughs> more warfare ahead. The Romans oh are boy. not going to give up on that ever. They certainly are not. No. Um, and actually, at this point, given that it's our 70th episode... I got you something special, Dr. G. Ooh! <laughs> what did you get me? It's a new segment. Oh my god! <laughs> yes, we decided to uh, slightly reinvent our podcast and the way we put it together. Mm. Yeah, so from now on, at the end of each episode, we're going to have a special segment called The Partial Pick. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Dr. G. Now, uh, Dr. G, would you like to explain what The Partial Pick entails? Oh, the partial pick. Yeah. Well, so we do our episode. Yep. We go through the narrative. Yep. And then we are going to give it a score mm. on a few different criteria. Nice. Um, so with a maximum score in mm. each category of 10 Roman eagles. Ooh, nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going to... Roman eagles? <laughs> <laughs> you know, are they the standards? Yes. yes they are the standards. <laughs> um, 
We'll give a mark out of 10, mm-hmm. 10 special eagles, on criteria including military clout. Mm. How fancy is your military this episode? Nice, nice, yes. Diplomacy. Ooh. Have the Romans been nice to anybody? <laughs> um, have they managed to negotiate with any success? This is very, that's going to be one of their weaker categories, <laughs> I feel. <laughs> Expansion. Mm. Have they gained new territory? Have they lost territory? Well, yeah, I was going to say, that could be a flip side. Oofed. Uh, Weirtus, how manly have you been, <laughs> oh Romans? Have you got it? Show us your the... morality. <laughs> and a citizen score. Yeah. How nice would it have been, as an everyday Roman, to have lived under the current narrative? Nice. All right, well, let's take it away. So, military clout. Although in Livy I have very little to base it on. <laughs> Uh, it's still a victory, eventually, uh, or a draw, if you want to look at it that way. But either way, the Romans will come out, you know, they're okay, they're alright. So I feel like I'm going to give them, based on Livy, maybe like a three eagles, because it's not spectacular. Oh, ouch. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> if you weigh up the, the first year, where yeah. they basically achieve nothing. Yes, um, true, true, And true. then the second year, where things go remarkably better true um you do have that moment where your stand is being thrown into the enemy <laughs> yeah look and for me this is the key thing for the reason why i'm going to give it more eagles i think i think you do uh, yes yeah dionysus account of throwing aquila's throwing the standards into the enemy yes. as a way of encouraging his own men to get in there and make it happen <laughs> get it boy yeah. roman victory yeah. fetch those standards yes um i feel like you know in terms of military clout to me that is up there i'm going to give it like eight eagles for that Alone. Wow. Okay. Oh yeah. So that because I, it, that, that, makes... that is something special, and I don't think we're going to see that again for quite some time. No, I guess I guess that makes it a total of eleven out of twenty Roman eagles Ooh. for military clout. Mm-hmm. What about on the diplomacy front? <laughs> look, yeah, look, it's a fail on diplomacy as it far as I can is, tell. Yeah. Uh, look, it's not the Roman strong suit, so I wasn't really expecting much. I'm giving yeah. them a, a fat. Zero eagles. Really? <laughs> See, I feel like I should give them a one, Ooh. just because they did go and at least talk to the Phoenicians. <laughs> mm. It wasn't I'm... straight out like, oh, oh no, you didn't. Whatever you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you didn't. So that's a, that's a one Roman eagle out of twenty one. Roman eagles. All right. So I think what we'll do is yes. So we've got like what eleven out of twenty. Let's mm. make it bring it back down to ten. So give it a half. Fair so enough. it's like you know that's about a five really. Okay. You know a five out of ten. Mm-hmm. A one out of twenty. Look, let's be generous. Make it a one out of ten. Okay. Okay. Expansion. Have mm. have the Romans gained any territory? Not really. I mean, they're, they're mostly just holding off people from taking theirs, I feel. Mm. But then I am reading through the li- I'm reading between the lines. There. So is that like a, a 5 out of 10 for just holding ground? Or is it less because Romans are really interested in expansion? Good question. Mm. I feel like maybe holding ground could be 5 because we can take it away when they lose territory. <gasps> uh, yeah. Uh. And then we can add more on when they gain territory. All right. So yeah. a solid 5 for not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell those wheels, you little. <laughs> you know, I'm giving you half marks for that one. Yeah, I think oh, it's, Rome. Yeah, it's They're holding their ground, yeah. Alright, Wirtus. Mmm. Mm. Any displays of manliness that stand out for you? Well, Aquilus, I mean... Aquilus on. is doing all of the heavy lifting, yeah, though. Yeah. Because, I mean, certainly the consuls in the previous year. I suppose that the, the fact that the consuls are, you know, preserving the status quo... <laughs> And whatnot. <gasps> eh, you know, that's like something. They're not mm. disgraced. <laughs> oh, but oh, but they are disgraced. I mean, well, that's... sorry, sorry. You're right. The, your two consuls that I don't really hear much about, they were disgraced. But then the other guys are okay. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. actually, maybe having a triumph and an ovation, you know, you know, that's true. Uh, that's, that's, true. Got a, that's got some weird to its quality about yeah, it. Yeah, I feel like I feel like it's a. You know what? I'm gonna say because of Aquilus and the triumphs, which are in your account, not mine. I feel like I have to give them a four. All right. Yeah. Ooh. Weird to us. You can be better. Yeah. yeah. Maybe <laughs> next time, Ancient Rome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a citizen score. Mm, we don't really hear much what's going on like back in the city this time. Look, I'm going to give them like pretty low marks though. I mean, all of the citizens, if you're a guy right now, you are on a battlefield somewhere. Yeah, you're, you're either either... dead army, you're <laughs> on patrol, or you are fighting as part of the main forces somewhere. Yeah, and we know that the plebeians in particular are really annoyed 
at this. I was con- going to say actually, there's no mention of Fabians being ticked off about having to fight again. Yeah, this is amazing because yeah, yeah we've got some issues here because. All of the citizens um, from the plebeians are being rounded up and forced into these armies, and they've not said anything. And we know, yeah, um, from yeah. from the struggle of the orders that is going on, that they are exactly. probably and, not happy about and this. And usually, it's always around a military event when, like, the patricians are like, "Come on, yeah." Come on. And is it the case that somebody like Aquilas has to throw those standards into the enemy because those guys do not want to do it? This is exactly the case because I think, uh, no, no, sorry, spoilers. But going forward, there's going to be a bit of this, like yeah. a bit of morale and that kind of stuff happening um, in terms of, okay, so you persuaded them to join the army, but then when you're out there, can you count on them? Mm. And so, I feel like yeah. the women are probably just not having a great time. Yeah, it would be... Like, They're doing a lot of heavy lifting. All jokes aside, yeah, it would be pretty tough, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so maybe like a... I'm ooh. giving it a ooh, or maybe a two. I was going to say a two. Yeah, yeah. Right, we agree. So two out of ten. Two out of ten. So yeah. what total do we have out of a to- potential <laughs> a total 50 eagles? <laughs> out of a potential... 50 eagles. Yes. So we're looking at 5, 10, 11, 15, 17. 17, wow, 17 wow. eagles. <laughs> well, Rome, you can Rome, do better. Yeah. Your glory days are still ahead of you yeah. <laughs> at this point. As a partial pick, uh, that's a that's a well fail. It is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, join us next time for more Roman shenanigans. Uh-huh.